Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. We became what we always were, a really big fish. I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Hello there. And Jonathan. That's me. And this week we're talking about Tim Burton's Big Fish. Uh, so, as always, short and sweet, Luke, what did you think? I was entertained by this movie. But uh, I didn't think it was a good movie. Okay, Jonathan. I this movie grew on me a lot. Like, uh, I would I would ultimately say it was pretty good. Like, really good. Mm -hmm. I love this movie, and I think the ending's phenomenal. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Interesting. So, I imagine we have things to talk about. I mean, you guys mentioned things you wanted to talk about. Does anybody you know, want to talk uh, about them? <laughs> Ewan, as, you know, a specific Jedi had, like, a LSD trip. It was a... Uh, I mean, I, I just what? feel like this movie's very... It's very much a... Uh, are, are you talking about the fact that it's Ewan McGregor was there? Yeah. With all yeah. the ones, <laughs> that stroke of a sentence? Um... No, I felt like this movie was very much like the Odyssey. You know, it had a lot of different elements. In that it's a, a in that it's many vignettes make up the. the yeah, is that and like a, I think this is the Odyssey. Maybe I'm misremembering, but in the Odyssey, that's where they go somewhere and they they love where they're at, like this island. Uh, yeah, that, that is that's the island of Ogiagia. He crash lands there with Calypso, who is a titan cursed to fall in love with heroes that land on her island. And yeah. uh, they fall in love, and he decides to leave to go back to his wife. I feel like it's it's very similar to the Odyssey in that way. Um, Do you mean just the Spectre vignette? The Spectre vignette, but also most of it in a way. Of no, course, which? it's about the father and son, but like there's the vignettes, the different... Um, the different segments of like just it's an odyssey it's it's a hero's journey in a sense but not really um i, I kind of disagree already really because I, don't, I wouldn't say it was a hero's journey because all throughout the uh the movie it was framed in such a way where uh of course the dad's not like a villain by any means but he's he's certainly not blameless you're not like you're rooting for him, but not like in the story. You're rooting for their relationship. Really? I never I, once I was. rooted for any of them. I, maybe that's. I feel like the girl more than anyone else. Like you need to leave both of them. Like when there was that big fight scene between uh, Mister uh, Ed and Don Price. Don Price. I was kind of like, oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah. I was kind of like. Eh, maybe both of them are toxic like Ewan McGregor, Ed Bloom is clearly doing a uh, love bomb which is like a sociopath or psychopath like sociopath um, playbook maneuver are you talking like, about when he's like winning her over? winning you don't win people over with that. No, no, yeah, no. I, like totally, kinda, I know, I get what you're saying, but I'm just it saying... It ruined like, part of the movie for me, to be honest. Okay, but, like, that didn't happen. <laughs> and like, that's the point of the movie, is, like... And, and I actually well, think that... I'm pretty sure that part was... It real. happened in some capacity. That's, yeah, that's right. what the ending reveals, is that none of these stories are uh, made up whole cloth. He just exaggerated details. Yeah. So that happened in some capacity. It may not have been the entire field, but it may have been like the entire front. And I, I okay. yeah, but I mean, but okay, but we don't know to what capacity. I also, guess. And, but uh, I think that I disagree it, that he did. It's like a sociopath manipulating her. I mean, the shitty thing he does is try to woo someone's fiance. That's kind of shitty. Well, yeah, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not shitty. I'm saying that's the shitty thing he does. I'm not. I wouldn't say he's a sociopath. He plants her favorite flower. He agrees not to strike back at her fiance. I mean, that part's probably the least. 
thing. That's not really, but I just feel like you, you don't say someone to someone's face like, I won't take no for an answer. But that's probably like, eh, well, yeah. I don't know. Um, I gotta say, Carl the Giant put in some fucking work for this movie. I think everyone does a good job in this movie except one person. Really? Is it Ewan McGregor? No. Because I feel like his his southern accent to me, like maybe as a kid, I was like, this is fine. Yeah, the or accent is... I would say Danny DeVito's accent was the worst. Like you could hear him suppressing his natural, like... Yeah, but it wasn't... It wasn't bad. I'm just saying that... Um... I feel like Ewan McGregor's performance was worse as far as like... Hello there. Uh, yeah, ac- accent aside, though, I think he, he was fine in the movie, though. Like, he, he wasn't doing a bad performance. It was just a weird accent. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, Knives Out and Daniel Craig's you, you affected accent. You don't think it's Billy Crudup? It's Billy Crudup. He has some weird deliveries. Um, I feel like they're more, like... True to life, in a way. No, that's insane. Which um, one's Billy Crudup? He is the son. Oh, son. Ah. Um. So here's the thing: Billy Crudup has specifically said that he would read lines and um come up with like the weirdest way to say them. <laughs> that's funny. Um, it's I don't know. Fine. I don't know if this is during that period or not. But um, it seems like it is because the line where he's at the bed and he's like, you're like the Easter Bunny and Santa, like that line, it's a long line and he's just like chugging, speeding through it, putting no emphasis on anything, just like rattling the words off in the fastest way. And I'm like, what is happening with this delivery? Nobody stopped him and was like, hey, maybe deliver this line. That was the one that really stuck out to me. But there was more than just that in the movie. I, I it's not something I picked up on, on as, a, as a kid watching this movie. Um, but yeah, Billy Crudup's deliveries at times were weird. I think everyone else is great. And I think they did a really good job casting young Sandra. Like she weirdly looked like Jessica Lange. Yeah, I know. I was yeah. like, oh, wow, that's actually... I, I will agree with that. Uh, interestingly, the reason they cast Ewan McGregor is because they felt like he looked like a young Albert Finney. Um, and I've looked up some pictures, and like I can see what they were saying. I, it's not like a clear-cut thing. Like, Alison Lohman playing young Sandra, like I was like, oh shit, she looks... Like, she has some qualities of Jessica Lange. Um, yeah. Definitely. But yeah, apparently that's why they cast Hugh McGregor. He looked like a young Albert Finney. I don't see it, but you know... Teach their own. Which also we have to say, Albert Finney, phenomenal. Killed it. He absolutely fucking killed it. This is by far the best performance. Oh, movie. easily. He's incredible. I mean, he's Carl a, the giant. He's up there. He was a he was a great actor, Albert Finney. Very very prolific British actor who is sadly dead now. Um, but yes, absolutely the best performance in the movie. Was, Just, this, was this a was this one of Tim Burton's earlier movies? Uh, this is like the halfway point, I would say. Oh, interesting. So we, we talked about this like... briefly last week. This is sort of the turn for um, Tim Burton. Yeah, like it down to not as good. Yeah, so Luke thinks, I, at least I believe what you said last week, you think this is his last good movie. That's, that's what I said. Okay. This is... Um, I, this isn't like a clean marker for uh, the turn of his career because he does have one horrendous movie before this movie. Um, but yeah, after this, it definitely gets rougher. For sure. Depending on how you feel about Sweeney Todd and Corpse Ride and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Those are the next three. I don't, does anybody like Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Um, I like some of the choices they made in it. I don't think it's a great movie. I don't think it's as bad as people say. Um, All right. I think Corpse Ride is fine, and I like Sweeney Todd. So to me, Sweeney Todd is the end of his run, because after Sweeney Todd is Alice in Wonderland, which 
That was Woof. unfortunate when I watched that. <laughs> Woof. <movie. laughs> um, but yeah, before this, his movie before this is uh, the 2001 Planet of the Apes, which is abysmal. I thought it was fine. It's not. It's, it's so not fine. It's a fine movie. It's really not a fine movie. If you if you don't look at the previous ones and just focus on that, it's fine. I mean, it has Mark Wahlberg in it, which is already a problem. You don't like Mark Wahlberg? I don't. I don't like particularly like him, but I don't know. I've I never heard of anybody in, having he's something in against one him. of my favorite movies of all time, and now I'm considering is making it that The Departed. Uh, no. <laughs> Wait, what's what is it then? my other the other guys oh i hate that movie i love that movie it's so good i don't like will ferrell at all i am um uh, i don't I know I, like i'm warm to him i'm not like particularly hot to him or anything but anyway we're off topic um we are way off topic another interesting thing about uh actor in this movie is uh marion cotillard she Cotillard. She uh this is her first non French film. Oh. Damn. Cool. And, and she did obviously now she's a very uh <clears throat> very popular actress. Fact. You can't be an inception and not be a popular actress. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh Tim Burton does an interesting thing where he like reuses people a lot. Um, mm -hmm. so his, his casts end up being like ensembles of people you will either see again or have seen before. Uh, obviously Helen, Helena Bonham Carter being his, well, she was his girlfriend at the time of this. I think mm -hmm. they're split now, but they have a kid together or something. She's obviously in like every single movie. Um, I think Cotillard shows up again in something. Missy Piles in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, Danny DeVito's in Batman. Uh, Deep Roy is in a couple things. Obviously, he's in... Uh, Mr. Soggy Bottoms yeah. also. In, yeah, that's uh, Deep Roy. Yeah. <clears throat> um, actually, a fun fun fact about that. Um, Tim Burton went to bat for Deep Roy in Charlie and the Tractor Factory and uh, made them pay him $1 million because he had to... He plays all the Oompa Loompas and had to like keep doing parts over and over again. Cool. I just love the name uh, Mr. Soggy Bottom. It's a good name. I mean, his 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 chosen actor name, Deep Roy, is also very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, those those aren't germane to the movie. It was just fun casting facts. Um, we can get into the actual meat of the movie. Um, I know you guys talked about wanting to like go through the plot more thoroughly is that something we want to actually start doing i think that it would be good because uh, i think like, i feel like everybody has a lot to say mm -hmm. about parts of the movie but it just never comes up or there's no like you don't want to like keep jumping around yeah parts of the film <laughs> um yeah so we start out with well, the first thing is the story of his son being born right mm -hmm. Yeah, um, which is by far the worst story that he tells. It's also not in the book. Yeah, really? Yeah, not not one of the vignettes in the book. The book has a lot more vignettes. Um, some of them are sort of condensed in uh, the movie in, I think, a very good way. It's a rare case where I think the movie is definitively better than the book. Really? Yeah, the book kind of meanders a little bit. Like, um, the town he grew up in, is not the town with the witch. He goes to another... He goes to three different towns. So, uh, he leaves his town. There isn't a divergent road. There's just, it's just accepted that when you go out of the town, you will be taken to a place where some people never return from. But in the book, that place is not Spectre. It is another town. And they try to get him to stay. And he leaves. He never goes to Spectre. He doesn't go to Spectre twice, so he doesn't meet like young Jenny... Um, he only goes to Spectre to buy the town. Like, the first half of Spectre is just cut off. It's just him going to the town and, and buying it. I think Young Jenny was one of the weakest parts of, like, 
I, was just I agree, I but I was really good. It was, she, yeah, the actress was good, but I, I, I think it was fine. But it was just like it was weird. I think the Young Jenny stuff was better. weird, but I think the first Spectre visit was good. Apart yeah. from that, it wasn't like I don't know. They didn't do it in a terrible way, but it was just sort of like, Ew, why? Sure. Where they made a big deal about like her age, where they were like. Well, I mean, it's because she's a little girl who's like crushing on an adult. Yeah, that is the, the adult, a thing that kids actually he, do. Yeah, that is yeah, a real yeah. thing, and the the adult is taking it in stride. It's not like you're yeah, no, right. That's, like you know, he's just. I like, didn't yeah. say it was like I. I just said it was, it was just a little bit. It was just like one of the weaker parts of the movie where it was just like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's it. Just like a, yeah. I remember being a young kid and crushing on like adult women. So yeah. it is what it is, but. I, I think it was done really well, actually. Um, but also, I meant like it didn't to me didn't really have a payoff where because then it like the what made it. I mean, the payoff is later on. She she expects to get with this guy as like an adult, saying. like it's what she's said. and she she ends up she ends up marrying a different person with the same age gap. Yeah, and then being like, it was a big difference. Right, but to me, that's not a payoff. To me, that like is what made it kind of, yeah. I mean... It, it is weird that as a grown woman, she like held on to that. I mean, I guess... I mean, yeah, 18, she's like, she, she's a grown... She knows better by then than like... Well, she should. She should have let go of the man that she met for like a month. <laughs> mm-hmm. If that. Especially since she was a young, knight, a child. yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So there's no story of uh, catching the giant catfish with the red wing in the book. It's uh, I think his dad's just out watching a football game or something, or listening to a football game on the radio when he's born and misses his birth. Ooh, that's way worse. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, the witch story doesn't happen in the. Uh, the the starting town either. I think the witch story is actually more interesting as well. Starting at the beginning, yeah. It's uh, it, it's interesting in in both the book and the movie, and they're they're quite different. Uh, in the book, a group of kids have the witch's eye in a box, and they have like this ritual where every night one of them takes it and has to keep it safe, and then bring it back in the morning, and then it's given to another person. And Edward uh, hears about this. He goes and volunteers to take the eye brings it back to the witch who then walks up to the people and shows them her eye or whatever mm. um but her eye doesn't tell the future either um in in the book he just has premonitions of the future weirdly like he he had a nightmare where his aunt died and then the next day she was dead and then he had a nightmare where his... so what you're saying is that you and mcgregor was force sensitive yes he has a nightmare where his father dies and the father's panicky all day and then the mom says oh you think you had a bad day the milkman dropped dead on the door stoop mm -hmm. which was they turn into a story yeah she turns into a story rather than a... um yeah there's a, there's a lot of little changes um but anyway going going through the movie plot uh so the witch encounter is good um seeing the future we see we see don price's future uh, uh, the other Price brother whose name I don't recall and we see Ed's or well we don't see Ed's he sees it yeah Ed sees it and then is Ed the doctor later what what are you the talking doctor? about not Ed's but um, the one kid does he is he, he ends up being the doctor no because he's kind of like doctors from a different the only town. black kid in town kind of thing. But doctors from the a different... yeah the the that kid doesn't see his future. The two Price brothers see their future, and Ed sees his future. Oh well, I thought they were all outside the house. They just I don't think so because we don't see Miley Cyrus say anything about her future. Yeah, you only see Miley Cyrus for a second. She she has one line. She's singing, and uh, my girlfriend actually noticed it. Like, is that Miley Cyrus? Stop. Um, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the witch part's great. And then we meet Carl, who you love. The part leading up to Carl, though. Uh, 
just the the town being and even after when they're like he's leaving what a glorious day here's the key to the city yeah i don't like the whole um what is it? Ash- ashton the ashton sequence Ashland. where they're like oh, yeah. he's the best he's our golden boy and i guess they're just doing it to set up don not liking him but yeah it, it still is like this doesn't I think it made happen. it worse because it's like don didn't have anything to begin with like he wasn't you know what i mean and then like yep i just trampled on him again um so anyway he leaves with carl and we get to the divergent path in the woods and he tells carl to go down the normal road and he'll take a shortcut through there where he goes to specter which we talked a little bit about jenny um, but I think the rest of Spectre is very good. This sort of offsetting, cheery town, but not in a like horror offsetting way. Just like, just in the human way of like, oh, these people are just happy, and that's weird. Yeah, they're too nice. <laughs> yeah, these people don't At one have point, problems. I was thinking like, this could be like a cult, like a sex cult. There's a lot of women. Yeah, there. but that's the thing. Is like, we just see these happy people that have no problems, and immediately we're like, what is the horror story here? And there's nothing. It's just a good, nice town. I mean, obviously, it's not real. It's him telling a story. In reality, oh, it's real. Spectre was just a small town um, that was very insular. But um, I, I think the beginning Spectre stuff is good. Could have done with less Jenny. That's, yeah, that's I think about, there's, I that's think there's that. an all right amount of Jenny. I was not... I feel like it ties the rest of the stories together in one of the parts that I like better in that it tied the story together. Oh, also the lady in the lake didn't need to exist. No. It doesn't pay off. Ever. The, yeah, There's no was... payoff to that whatsoever. Yeah. I thought that maybe the lady in the lake was going to be his wife because he talked about his wife. Right. Being a fish that he caught I thought it was the fish. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. The, the lady in the lake is a fish. It's the fish. From the story. The fish. Yeah. Which, which one? There's a couple. It's, the, the, it's the fish. He, it? It's the fish he catches when... His son is born, I think. Isn't that supposed to be his wife or something? No, no, no. no. It's an actual yeah. fish. Because they're already married at that point. He I uses the his wedding ring. The point of the story was that, yeah, you had to use the wedding ring because, like, if you want to, to have a big catch. Oh, no. I don't think the fish was supposed to be a wife. He, he was just. Oh. He just caught a big fish when his son was born. The biggest yeah, fish okay. who'd never been caught. <clears throat> um, yeah, that, I, would, I would remove that part probably. Um, not that this is like a long movie and things really needed cut, but it, it just doesn't pay off. Uh, then we. Get... I really like the tone of the movie, though. Like, I do like how every story sort of had its own uh, kind of feel to it. Yeah, it was, like very lively. I think the vignette structure is good. I mean, the, I think the movie is visually gorgeous as well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very nice looking. Uh, especially Spectre, they really like um, push up the colors and like. Make and then the contrast town. of Spectre later, yeah. I feel like, is, is good. Uh, so what's next after this? Circus? He meets back up with Carl, we go to the circus. And then uh, <laughs> Danny DeVito sort of um, enslaves him and yeah, strings, and and strings him and along as well. Like, gives him terrible information. Like, she likes music? You think that's worth a month of work, Danny DeVito? Mm-hmm. Turns out Danny DeVito is a, a werewolf. <laughs> right. Um, that that scene's great with uh, yeah. Mr. Soggy it's, Bottom it's... crying as he pulls the gun out of his large costume. I felt like it was a little random. What do you mean? Like, he's a werewolf. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, like... yeah, that's, that's, that's how the entire story is. It's <laughs> just a little bit off the cuff. You didn't think it was random that a naked lady in a lake had a snake coming up to her, which he caught, and then she dives into the water and becomes a fish, and now the snake is a stick? You didn't think that no, was that a little random? random at all. <laughs> okay. No, that wasn't random at all. Sure, okay. That's things that happen in real life. Yeah. But I've never seen anyone turn into a werewolf. Just not hanging out with the right people. Um, so anyway, yeah, at, at this point, after all the uh, s- slave stuff, we finally learn about Sandra, the, uh, the woman he will marry. She goes to Auburn. She goes to Auburn. And then Edward goes to Auburn. 
and stalks her. <laughs> and, and, and then uh, love bombs her. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Don beats the shit out of him, and she gets mad and gives the ring back. I and, feel like it would have been nice if you and McGregor would have just been like. Can we go on a date now? Or something along <laughs> that line, like afterwards, instead of being like, I won. <laughs> like acting like, yes, it's over. You are mine now. Which is like the kind of face he had going on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't like that. Like, like, yeah. I was like, please, <clears throat> Sandra, run. <laughs> like, and then uh, Don has a heart attack. Yep. On the right shooter. after. Which that scene always makes me think of the very bad movie Dreamcatcher. Um, really? When... Just because there's a man in a like uh, tank top that dies on the shooter in that movie. Do you and know what it reminds like, me of? What? Elvis Presley. Yeah. He I also, did think of Elvis too. He also, he also died on the toy, that's true. Yeah, different circumstances. I guess Elvis is closer probably considering the man on the toilet who dies in Dreamcatcher has an alien worm thing crawl up his ass and kill him. It's true. So it's like a slightly different situation. What did you only think only of... a little bit? <laughs> no, I won't bring up Dreamcatcher anymore. It's a bad but... movie. Um, I haven't seen it in many. I think years. it's a good bad movie though. Well, I'd have to watch it again. I don't know. It's not a bad bad movie. But yeah, anyway, I'd have to watch it again. <clears throat> also based on a book by Stephen King, I believe. Yep. Um. Then we get to the war sequence, which this is probably the one I'd cut out. It's just weird. Really? I mean, I thought that the word... See, I don't know, like, it fleshed out his life a little bit. But it, it, it doesn't drags. have to... Like, he gets drafted and then goes to Korea. Doesn't fight in the war. Really. And just goes to... I, was, a, I thought that he did... Well, okay. So, I mean, that's, like, the whole point of the story is, like, what can you believe? Yeah. I actually did think, like, he went to the war and then... Um, Oh no, I'm sure he did, but I'm just mean in the movie we just see him go to a play, and then but, yeah, but he but, stole he, to get covert information. Yeah, but hold on, he does actually go to that play, and he does meet a pair of yeah. Uh, so like that's women. why I, I to me I was like that happened. That was the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think th that scene really only exists to have the sisters, and then the reveal later that they're not Siamese twins. Because, like, what else is that scene doing? Also, the CG on the women, it was not great. Nope. <laughs> I know that's, that's an older like, movie, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah but it's I mean, just, it's like, it's unsettling. They had, it's they had about... such a tiny waist, each of them, because mm -hmm. they were, yeah. Yeah, weird. and the way that yeah. their waists were bending were, like, yeah, that's like a worm, not like someone who, or people who are uh, conjoined. That's a worm. They walked with that rhythm. Definitely true. Yeah. Um, and then we get to the most insane sequence. The traveling salesman. Where he That's meets the best sequence though. It it just Winslow is is insane as a character. Like he decides to leave Spectre, starts robbing banks. Then after Ed is like, hey, maybe don't rob banks, he's like, You're right, I should work on Wall Street, and is successful at that for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, I really think, um, to be honest, I would I would rather see this movie through Winslow's uh, point of view. So the first half of it, he's just sitting, Inspector, badly writing poems. You don't have to keep it all there. I mean, you could be <laughs> like, I spent five years, Inspector. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the the movies where it feels like. Uh, he was going to be given a performance and not just an avenue for jokes. True. He's used as an avenue for jokes a lot. That's true. And he does a good job. No, yeah, I mean, he's great. Um, what happens after, after the Winslow stuff? He gets his house. Then, oh, then it's the, it's the return to Spectre. Will goes to Spectre, right? I think he has... Uh, maybe you're right. Yeah, I think Will goes to Spectre. Like uh, which is a fine sequence, I think. Um, I don't 
really know that you could convince people who have money to be like, hey, help me save this town for no reason? Well, maybe uh, the Wall Street guy because he used to live there. Yeah, and you don't have to convince them. Like, I think it's crazy that I think it's crazy that he convinced Danny DeVito to give him money. Yeah, Just... that one. Because <laughs> everything about his character. But that's the thing is, like, you don't insane. know. You don't know if he did. Like, yeah, you don't know who true. he got the money from. That's true. I th- I I kind of just thought that he got the money just from the. the no, public. it says he went to everyone he helped make yeah, wealthy. Which knew, I mean, yeah. he didn't help make Danny I DeVito mean, wealthy, but he's in that cut when he says that he, line. He may have went to them. Doesn't mean that they were like yeah. hell yeah. Um. Actually, the Wikipedia says uh, rescue the town from bankruptcy by buying it at an auction, rebuilt it with the helps from his friends from Callaway Circus. So maybe they were just the muscle. Yeah, I know um, that uh, Carl helps. Yeah, Carl you know, fix the, tilts the house fix back. The house, yeah. Uh, and then we get to the weird affair subplot, um, which is just it doesn't need to be there. I actually, I, I agree and disagree. It either needs to not be there at all. Or he needs to actually have had an affair to justify Billy Crudup being so mad at him. Yeah. Because Crudup's just kind of an asshole. Yeah. When his father... His father doesn't really do that much. I mean, I, I kind of get his frustration at the wedding speech thing where it's like, this is supposed to be a day of celebrating us. And you just turned it into one of your stories. But also, like, he's only just meeting your wife. He can only really tell a story about him. And granted, I mean, Billy Crudup says, like, I'm a footnote in that story. But he doesn't have a lot of options. Because, again, he wasn't very around as a father. They say that in the movie. He was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. So maybe don't have your dad make a speech. (laughs) Yeah. But maybe he took it upon himself to make that speech. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know. I, I think it isn't shown a lot the justification for how angry Billy Crudup is. Because they haven't talked in years. I don't know. Was he angry? He didn't come across as angry to me. Well, yeah, he's. they don't talk. They say that in the movie. They haven't talked for years. Well, from, like... from the wedding thing, and I just took that as the wedding meant that much to the character, which is stupid, but people are kind of like that. Like, yeah, that's true. People are really yes. vain over like events that don't matter. I, ju- I just think it wasn't. Well, my, done. my girlfriend has specifically mentioned um, if at her wedding or if another girl at her sister's wedding or something were have were to have like proposed during that. Oh, wedding, yeah, I mean that's terrible. Is it? I mean, I don't really care. I, no, I it's it. bad. Is it? Yeah, I think that that's just as silly as being mad at somebody giving a bad speech. No, because you're turning their wedding Which is and a exactly celebration of their union what? into your wedding type thing. That's what Ed Bloom did. I mean, that's, what, that's why he was mad at his. Right, that's right, literally right. what he said but to him. I think Ed Bloom is still trying to tell a story about Billy Crudup. He's just bad at it. Whereas when you propose at someone else's wedding, that's not about them at all. That's about you whole cloth you are making this your thing Mm, i don't know i think they're similar but i I think i think proposing at someone else's wedding is way worse so i agree i do agree that it's worse i'm just saying that it is a very very similar thing they're absolutely they're absolutely in the same vein they're very selfish taking my girlfriend would say that if someone asked her that she would be like super offended even asked her yes it's crazy I think it's um, weird that you can understand that, but you can't understand being mad at... Like, no, no, I understand him being mad. I just don't think it's enough to warrant not speaking for also it depends years. on if he was. It also depends on if he was supposed to uh, give a speech. Yes, like, but maybe, we don't know that. We don't. We don't know. But If yeah. he wasn't supposed to give a speech, it's worse, for sure. If he asked his dad to make a speech, speech. yeah, if he asked his dad to make a speech, kind of like you asked. I highly doubt he, I highly, highly doubt he did. You never know what someone's going to say. I highly, highly doubt he asked for him if they're having such a strenuous relationship with him. So like, I just assumed that the dad was just like, 
I'm gonna give a speech about my son and then proceeded to give a really shitty speech. And it wasn't that, in my opinion, like what I took away from it wasn't like, he wasn't like pissed off at his dad about the wedding. He was pissed off about, um, he was, he was pissed off about him taking away a moment from him when he wasn't a part of his life. So it was like, you weren't a part of my life to give a speech. I didn't ask you to give a speech. And then you gave a speech anyway. Yeah. That's fair. That to me is like, that's like, okay, that, that'd be pretty frustrating. I, so. I still just think Billy Crudup's reaction is a little on the strong side. Yeah, a little bit. Especially considering how flat and not emotionally is for the whole rest of the movie. True, true. It's like, this is the one thing he's reacted to in his life. He saved up all of his emotion for this moment so he could bottle up this vitriol. <laughs> Maybe just bring it up before. <laughs> like at some point, be like, hey, uh, I don't like this. Um, anyway, so after the affair stuff, uh, Edward gets worse. And Critic goes back. And we get to the ending sequence, which is, holy shit, so good. The, really? pay- the payoff of this movie, I think, is phenomenal. Do you not agree? Are you talking about the just the, the absolute ending with like the death scene? The the whole ending starting from the hospital bed when he asks uh, Will to tell him the story. I feel like that Will's on. story to me, I did not like. I really liked the funeral scene though. I think I think both are very scene. good. Hey, I actually thought his story was a little bit weak, but I think it was supposed to be because he's not used yeah, to telling these stories. He's not his dad. Yeah. He's just trying and to you know honor what? his dad. Maybe maybe he was giving a weird performance. But there's also there's there's the moment in it where he he adds some unnecessary detail and his dad laughs and is like, "Good, yes." Mm. Like I think I think it's a nice scene of him like, you know, I I understand you more now, and like he's starting to come to terms with the fact that this wasn't all lies; it was just um, embellished, and maybe he does know his dad, and he's trying to honor his dad by telling a story he would like. I think it's yeah. that's really nice. In a way that he would tell it. Yeah. yeah. And then also, the, the funeral's great. Also, one moment we kind of skipped over was when the doctor told him how things really happened. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what, do you, what do you guys think? Like, would this make you mad if you didn't know your dad at all? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a weird Maybe. thing to get mad about not knowing the story of your birth. I don't know the story of my birth. I assume my mom went to a hospital and gave birth to me. I don't like. Yeah, it's not important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe I think, as a kid I think, it would be important. I think it's different if somebody makes a big deal about it and it's a lie. I guess, yeah. Um, but yeah, even the doctor says like he wouldn't have been allowed in the hospital room anyway. So why does it matter if he was there? And also, it doesn't I mean he but says he could have been on the same him. vein? It's like. He wasn't allowed in the hospital room anyways. But to be Why fair, he, they, they specifically said, like, he was away. They don't say, like, oh, no, he definitely wasn't fishing or whatever. Well, I think the implication is he was away on a sales route. Yeah, but you can be on a sales route and then decide, like, you know what, I'm going to do some fishing. I know some people like that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think, I think it would be frustrating if, like, you knew no information at all about um your your folks but like i don't know much about my parents like high school days like yeah, i know some of the friends my people. dad hang out hung out with because he still hangs out with some of them i know my mom worked at a diner because that's how they met i know my dad played football and wrestled but like i don't know a lot of stories from when they were that age so i yeah i think this is just a it's hard to get yourself in the headspace because for the dad, stories are important. And I think the son understands that. But once he realizes the stories are a lie, it's like, oh, well, everything you hold is important that I thought was important isn't true. And that's where the sort of betrayal comes in. Mm, I guess. It would be like if my dad got my brother and I to wrestle for like eight years. And then we find out later, like, he didn't like wrestling. It's like, what the fuck? How about if your dad told both of you that you were Native American? 
And then you found out that you were... Well, I don't think my dad ever told me that, to be fair. I think it was mostly <laughs> yeah, I think you did. the older generation of the family. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't feel betrayal like that because I was always dubious about that claim. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Did, what, did you feel a certain way about this, Jonathan? No, I just thought the movie handled it really well, like when they when they did it, because it was, uh, I mean, it was purposefully delivered in such like a uh, a way that is such a letdown compared to the to the fantastic story. But then also, like I I think that they did it well to where that was what he wanted to hear. Like, right, it, it hurt him, but it also, uh, it, it gave him what he wanted, which he he just he did genuinely want to understand his dad. Yeah, like this he, movie he did it. Did a pan's lap or not pan's lap? Sorry, it it did a uh, a life of pie. Even though life of pie did it after of being like, which would you prefer the mm-hmm. fun story or the horrible story? The boring yeah. one. I, I yeah. do think it's insane that he's like, I don't know, I kind of liked your version. You can appreciate yeah, him like, telling the truth, but like. It wasn't like a, a fun version. Like it's not like it brought you closer <laughs> to his father. It he just literally like, was like, but, but like, it did. So it did bring him closer to his father. I, I because he brought him brought him closer to who his tr- father truly was. Like knowing that, knowing that his dad was away. Like he, of course he already he knew that his dad was sort of absent throughout his own life. But like he was absent throughout his birth because that's I think a part of the frustration with him is he didn't know what he could be mad at. Like, I, I think that he was he was yes. frustrated with I yeah, and the, I think maybe story, it's not a healthy thing, but I just think I just think it's a really excellent way, and I also really like how uh, we don't know the answer as an audience. Like, mm-hmm. we only know what he knows, so we're allowed to make our own conclusions. Yeah, I I, I, I still think it's a good scene. I just think it's weird that he's like, I like your version. Like, I understand him I appreciating say, I think the I truth. Would like it. Really, you like the yeah? He just wasn't there. Duh. I did. It was such like a a hammer. Like it was like a I don't know what's what's the word. Like it, it's not that it surprised me. It was the opposite of like it didn't surprise me, but it didn't surprise me in uh like I guess I you want it to not be true, but you knew it was true. It's that bittersweet. It's just that like funny yeah. feeling of just like ah you know like huh. Do you know Do you know what I actually really like about the ending? My my favorite beat. Uh, that I didn't even remember from watching this movie previously, and I only noticed it uh, watching this time, is as the camera like pans out and we get to the end of the movie, we hear kids talking in the background, and one of them is like, and he was like, a giant, 15 feet tall. Isn't that right, Dad? And Will says, pretty much. Implying that like while he wants his father's story to live on, he doesn't want to outright lie and like, you, you know, like it gives the impression yeah. that he's like he's telling these stories and repeating them, but not repeating all of the affectations. Like he's not like this man was giant, the biggest person you've ever seen. He's like, yeah, he was big. <laughs> yeah, mm. I thought that was nice because it's like a it's it's a nice merging of their he two characters. He was the tallest person I've ever yeah, seen. He was the, yeah, he's a very very tall person. He's uh, I think he's like six. Yeah, rip. Literally, rest in peace. Yeah. He died naturally after this. Yeah, but people who are extremely tall often die oh, quite young. Long. There's a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of problems. Complications, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he died at 32. Wow, that's actually younger yeah. than I thought. Two years after. How old was Andre the Giant when he died? Oh, he was older. He's like, oh, he was like, Andre was also proportional, which usually means there's not like a hormonal imbalance. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I think the ending of this movie is great. Um, I thought the funeral scene was good. I did not like um, the rest too much. It's interesting, really. And I also thought, like you you said actually, which I disagree for the rest of the movie, but like, yeah, um, Mr. Crudup's like storytelling ability, it, it didn't do me right. I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah. But I, I like I said, I enjoy this movie, but I think the story was not good. This might be my favorite Burden movie. Hmm. It's between this and Beetlejuice. I don't really? know if this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but to me, this movie 
did not really feel like a burden to be. I don't know if that's yeah. Um, I mean, it didn't have any like the creepy. Vibe it's it's very stylized, like which is a burden thing. I think yeah, usually have the lighting. He's just usually he's just normally stylized toward the the weird, but like uh, I think it's similar in some ways to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with the use of color and the stylization. Right. But I don't consider Charlie and Chuck Charlie also. Chocolate. I don't consider that a movie. So I don't consider it a Burton movie because like okay. it's not like one. I didn't like it, but I also know that other people didn't like it, which sort of affirms that um, it's bad. You know, yeah. <laughs> not that it's bad, just like it isn't what people watch a Burton film for. Yeah, yeah. This so is, you can't classify it as that, in my opinion. This is definitely different to to Burton's normal stuff for sure. I, I think I've heard that. Ed Wood is maybe tonally similar, but I haven't seen it. Um, but I gotta say, uh, Big Fish, you know, obviously the uh, the tone's gonna be different because it's not his story necessarily. Right, it's, it's not his, his story. adaptation. They originally wanted, uh, I think it was Spielberg for this movie. Which would be interesting. I think it would have been a better movie. Maybe. I really like this movie. I thought it was great, uh, but it did grow on me. Like, all throughout the beginning, I was very, uh, like, I don't know. I didn't I didn't care because I, too, was also, like, I don't see why he cares so much. Like, because the, the reason you want to listen to the stories is to find out the truth. Right. But I didn't care about the truth until later on when it hit me, like, that the dad wasn't around. So I, I – this movie, I think it, it's one that will – be better on a rewatch and two i think that it's one that uh it grows on you like the ending is just so much better like it, it starts okay but it ends like fantastically yeah and and maybe that's uh maybe we're weighted towards the ending because we have uh less than ideal relationships with our fathers although i don't think so because this movie doesn't make me want to have a closer relationship with my father. <laughs> so, you no, know, I, I felt actually, like uh, I, the previous movie that we'd watched about time. Actually, the, I liked the ending. More. I don't know if this movie is supposed to make you want to have. I don't think so favorite. either. I think because it's... I I think the dad was definitely in the wrong in a yeah. lot of major ways. Yeah, <laughs> and I also feel like he uh, he wasn't a character I rooted for. I and, I and then again, I didn't like Billy Crudup's character too much just right. because. Like, oh, he's a whiny baby, basically. Like, you're fucking like thirty-five. Get over it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's okay. And like, oh, so what? He gave a bad speech at a wedding that was like kind of self-centered. I'll say and, it again, though. People are like that. Yeah. But people are wrong, <laughs> and that doesn't make me like their characters. I didn't think that it was. I feel like the best so... character in this entire movie was carl because he did nothing but help people out i I don't think that it's such a terrible thing because I, he did I mean, eat some like, dogs because because you don't see did what happened know? before anything in the movie you don't know if that was the only thing the dad did like he might have confronted his dad before and been like hey why weren't you around and the dad was like i told you i was fighting uh in a covert mission and whatever. yeah so it's like I think that it's it, it. I think that that's really where the strain on their relationship is. I don't think that he's mad at his dad just because he told a story. I think he's mad at his dad because he has asked yeah. his dad plenty of times, like, "Hey, what's going on?" And his dad has said, "Did I ever tell you about the time I won your mother over?" And he's like, "This, I'm so pissed off. Like, I can't, I can't, I don't know who you are." And that's like. I, I totally get that. Yeah, no, I agree because he says like, uh, "You tell lies, Dad," and he's like, "I've never told anything but the truth since the day you were born." You can't see that. That's your failing, not mine. It's like, well, no, you are lying. You aren't acknowledging it though. Like, mm. just because some of it's true doesn't mean you are not lying. Right. Um, I also did like how. Hold on, hold on. It hold was on. his truth, but in hold on. How did he um, necessarily lie? Like, there's nothing that verbally <clears throat> he lies about. Oh, what do you mean? Plainly lies. Yeah, like give give me an example. The Siamese twins. He doesn't. He doesn't verbally say. You just see that. Okay, he but he, just it's him telling the story. Yeah. No, that's very, crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's dumb. That's a dumb take. This no, it's is not. Yes, it's we are. Not. We are seeing the visual representation of him telling the story. Also, no, I said his wife. Where he said I, he caught a fish woman. All right, I'm gonna disagree one hundred 
fucking percent. And he doesn't say anything about a fish woman, pretty much. He says a fish, and then he says her, like, refers to the fish as a her. But I think what you're seeing, the visual representation, is what a kid's imagination is thinking when an adult is telling you, like, and this guy was as tall as a house. And people were no. like, and yes, that's what I think. That is not how the movie is presenting it. 100% that's how I think. Okay, well, now I understand why I you think disliked makes... it so much because, yeah, then it makes his character super unreal, like unreasonable. Okay, what about the line he says, they say when you meet the love of your life, time stops, and that's true. What they don't tell you is when it starts again, it moves extra fast to catch up. That's not I a lie. I experienced that. It's like, true. Dude, crazy. That's how it be. I mean, the moment lives in your mind, yes, but like... Yeah, yeah, but then like... It doesn't move extra fast to catch up. But after that, it could have been that she just escaped him as far as like, yep, she got away. But that's not... Again, that that, that's, that part doesn't bother me He at does all. also say he sees his death in the eye. Maybe he did. Which is obviously, you know, they never disprove that... So then why was he so happy when his son, at the end of the movie, on his deathbed, lied about how he died? And he was like, hell yeah, that's how I, that's how I died. Because his, this is what I think, he's just having a conversation with his son. What about when he says they hold an iceberg to Texas with a woolly mammoth inside it? They hold the iceberg for drinking water. I'm pretty sure that actually happened. I think it's very clear that the dad is supposed to be alive. Yeah, he's absolutely. The mother even okay. says, not but everything your father says is lies. Acknowledging that he lies. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I'll agree. The movie is worse. How is that worse? <laughs> what you just presented was a terrible version of this movie. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to make it better. No, you made it worse. What do you mean you're trying to make it better? The version anyway. where the son is mad at the dad for telling lies when the dad only told the truth and the son is an idiot and misinterpreted <laughs> the truth is a terrible that's movie. Funny. <laughs> that's a comedy no, premise, not but a anyway, movie premise. I feel like the only person here who is uh, has no guilt is Carl, Dr. Bennett, and Mrs. Bloom. Who is a goddamn angel? What about Josephine? Who shouldn't. Hmm? What about Josephine? Joseph, well, we don't know enough about Josephine. We don't know anything about. Well, she Josephine. never did anything wrong on camera. Yeah, but you barely know. I mean, you don't know. You don't when know Ed Bloom to, either. You know Ed Bloom more than you know Billy Crudup. Carl ate a dog. All right, I don't want to hear it. That's true. There's no proof of that. A little he girl said he says didn't it. eat a dog. He, he said, also just ate other people's farm animals, which wasn't cool. He ate a lot of animals. And his excuse awesome. was, I was hungry. That's <laughs> fair enough. It's, I mean, not really. What if he was, I, get, I just wanted I, to hey, eat it for I get fun. hungry every day. I've never eaten someone's dog. Well, here's well you're thing. also not a giant. Are you Carl? Stuff. I'm not. I'm pretty big, though. Is your name Carl? I'm above average for height. Are you as big as a house? Depends on the house. house. Yeah, I didn't think so. Depends on the house. <laughs> I guess it does. <laughs> um, hey, look, we've almost actually hit an hour this time. I'm ready to score this motherfucker. All right, let's yeah, let's sure. score it. I'm between a six and a seven. Really? Yeah. That's the thing. Nothing okay. connected with me in this movie too much, but. The, vi the visuals are very good. I liked uh, the music, and I liked the acting. So I think I'll give it a 7. Okay, Jonathan. I'm between a 7, 8, or 9. I really don't that's, know where That's wild. Is. How do you not? Because, because the beginning is like a 7. Yeah. The end is like a, a 9. I think a 10. It, it might be a 10, but it's... I, I, I think the end is a 10. I don't think the movie overall is 10. Okay. Maybe, but like I don't know what uh, level to put it on. I think that this would go higher on a rewatch, but on my first placement, I think I'm gonna go with an eight. Okay, I um, interestingly, if, if I had to score this movie before I watched it again, uh, I probably would have given it a ten. Not because it's like a perfect movie, but it's a movie that's like imminently rewatchable for me. Um, I'd love it. Um, I would. I don't think I'd give it a ten because. 
Billy Crudup stuff is weird, and there is some wasted beats in the movie. But I am going to give it a 9, because I do think this is a very good movie. Um, I've seen this movie a dozen times, probably. It's got to be pretty good, man. Um, yeah, I, I think this movie's great. Uh, it's, it's just a very, like, fun, stylistic movie. Yeah, I, I remember definitely when I watched it as a kid, that was one thing I 100% took away with it, took away from it. Um, I do want to know, how, how do you guys rank this in the, the Burton canon for you guys? I don't know how many Burton movies you've seen. Like, what, um, what do you put above this? Because I assume this is at the higher end of the Burton. I have to put um, Nightmare. Okay, he doesn't direct that, but... Oh, really? Yeah, he's the... Uh, he's like the lead animator on it. And he's like the writer, but he's not the director for it. Damn. That's crazy. Interesting. I always thought that he was the... Uh... <laughs> But I mean, as an animator, he's got to have his. Like, it's definitely. You can see his influence. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that's the thing threatening. about Burton. A lot of his scenes are very, like, stylistic and not wasteful because of his background in animation. Mm. Um, he went to school for animation originally. Ah, okay. He, uh, I think he went to school with Brad Bird. Same school. Uh, the guy who does Incredibles and all the Pixar stuff. Um, I would put. Mars Attacks slightly under this. I haven't seen Mars Attacks. Um, you probably won't like it. You'll think it's horrible. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, f I think his first three movies are the best. So that's how I feel. Being, wait. Kiwis, Beetlejuice, and Batman. Okay. Yeah, uh, the only thing I would put above this, I think, is Beetlejuice, maybe. And I flip-flop on that. Um, Batman's close, but I don't think I would ever put it above this. <clears throat> Where do you land, Jonathan? Uh, I, I want to pull up his, his works before I can say for sure. I don't know. How, how many of these have you actually seen? How many Tim Burton movies? Yeah. A lot, okay. but not, not enough. Have you seen Beetlejuice? Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Good. I actually don't. Uh, I like Beetlejuice. I don't think that it's like. I would put this above Beetlejuice. Oh, Beetlejuice is so fun though. Like it is. It is fun. It is fun. I. I just. I don't like Beetlejuice. Like the character Beetlejuice. Well, yeah. He, he's supposed to be a creep. Like he's. He's not a good character. Yeah, like he's a bad dude. That he's the bad guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. No. I get it. I just. I don't. I don't like it. I've never <laughs> seen his Batman. I don't think unless it's. Uh, his Batman is Keaton Batman. Yeah, I've not seen that. And then Batman Returns is um, is it still Keaton? Um, no. Or Batman Returns is Keaton. Is Batman Keaton as well? I would yeah, they're both Keaton. Oh yeah, it's Batman Forever that's not Keaton. Yet. Right. Well, there's two Nightmare. that aren't. I would put Nightmare about this, even though he didn't direct it. I still consider that a Burton. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably all I've seen that I like remember. Because there's Kilmer Bat and Clooney Bat. Batman Forever's Kilmer. What's Clooney's Batman called? I haven't robbed and right. Yeah. I guess I haven't seen <clears throat> as many as I thought I did. Yeah. Um, his filmography gets kind of choppy after this. I mean, you got Charlie and the Shark Factory, which, like, obviously is very yeah. divisive. I don't think it's as bad as people say, but it's not, like, a good movie. Um, I mean, like, the, the, the visuals of it were fine. Yeah. But, like, I don't know why Charlie was so, like, or not Charlie. I don't know why Willy Wonka was so weird in it. Well, that's more in line with the book really yeah like it's the book's way more sinister like yeah. and weird but and that's I, why when we that's why uh actually, yeah. Gla <laughs> glass elevator never got made the sequel to willy wonka uh the gene wilder uh, sorry, let me fully reverse there's a sequel book called the glass elevator they wanted to make a sequel to the gene wilder willy wonka the glass elevator and they were refused by the rolled doll estate because they were like no you did not do the book. You did your own thing. Oh, um, interesting. Like the, the songs that are in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory are the original songs from the book. I mean, obviously, Elfman did weird like musical styling, like he you know did a rock version, but all the lyrics are from the book. 
Roald Dahl has a, a lyric writing credit on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. There's lyrics in the book for songs? Yeah. The, the, Oompa, the Oompa Loompas sing the songs in the book. Yeah, okay. I thought you were talking about all the songs, and I was like, what? <laughs> it's a musical book? No, 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 yeah. All of the, all the children being carted off songs are in the book. Yeah, I, yeah I, thought, I don't know. I thought the first movie, it didn't seem, um, it didn't seem out of place. Because he was still weird. He yeah. just wasn't, like, it just, uh, The I first know, movie's right? fun, it's just, it's not Roald Dahl. Like, if you've read any Roald Dahl, it's fucked. Like, a lot of the stories are just dark. <laughs> I'll have to read it, then. There's a story about a couple called the Twits that just, like, hate each other and try to kill each other all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, after Charlie and Chuck Fury's Corpse Bride, which I think is fine. I don't think it's, like, a... It doesn't stick out as, like, a the best animated thing I've ever seen, but I think it's, it's fine. It looks nice. Um, and then Sweeney Todd, which I like. And the music is really good. Actually, I, I did really like Sweeney Todd as well. Um, I guess the music is, is more a credit to... Uh, the original stage play than the, the film adaptation, but it's still good. And then you get Alice in Wonderland, which is bad. Uh, and I haven't seen anything past Alice in Wonderland, actually, because I hated Alice it's, in Wonderland. It's, it's a turning point, for sure. Um, oh, I saw Frank and Weenie. That one was like... It was... It's a movie. It wasn't bad. It was fine. It, it was... Uh, I don't know. I don't view Tim Burton as like particularly. Uh, I don't know. Frank and Weenie was way more child friendly than I thought it was going to be. If that makes sense, like it was, mm -hmm. it was like toned down. If that makes sense, I think his animation is always child friendly. Animation is, uh, but are the stories? I guess. I yeah. guess Nightmares. Nightmares is like not really doing anything not child friendly. I don't even think Corpse Ride is doing anything not child friendly, and it's literally a dead woman coming back and forcing a dude to marry her. And it's still <laughs> child friendly. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Frank and Weenie's more of the same, though. I guess it's just a worse story. Yeah, I, I think it's because like, uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know why. Anyway, I don't know what makes it different for me. We've. I feel like we've gone on for quite a while. It's been an hour, but we were, we were still talking about things. There's there's just no. We don't have a time limit on this podcast. Oh, hey, okay. we have we have twenty minute episodes. We have two hour episodes. <laughs> well, I don't think we have any two hour episodes. <laughs> no, it's not it's maybe the E three episodes were long, but yeah, the E three. What did we call the E three? I remember it, like, was, it was it was long. Game. It was like the E three spectacular. I think it was just like a dumb long title. I loved it. Whatever it was, it was like this is can look great. great. Um, cheeky. Uh, yeah, I think the only Tim Burton movie I would watch. Uh. I mean, I, obviously, I don't know what's going to be coming down the pipeline. I will maybe watch Beetlejuice 2, because I liked Beetlejuice. Yeah. But, um, other than that, like, I hear okay things about uh, Dark Shadows. Um, I don't care to watch Frank and Weenie. I don't know. It's just like, Alice in Wonderland sucked. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find what this E3 video is called, even though it's not at all important. I don't see it. Oompa. Oh, Oompa. we have a pre three special. That's that's what I like. Pre three. <laughs> we got to do another pre three though. Did we actually record this before E three and we were just talking about our predictions? Yes. Okay. And I love that E three is coming up. We would have to do that like this week, right, or next week? Doesn't E three doesn't E three start like next Friday or something? We could do something like, and it wouldn't have to be that long. Just like Saturday. each conference, what we expect. Uh, we could do that. It, I mean, it's more about your guys's time schedules. Like, it doesn't bother me to hop on just to do an episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could do that. All right. So, what's the overall score? For um, the overall score for Big Fish is an eight. Fair. That, uh, that's the fourth ever highest rated. Yep, it is tied. Oh, uh, no, it's tied for third, actually. Mm. Uh, Your Name has 8.6, Mononoke has 8.3, and is this Moonlight? Moonlight? Yes, Moonlight and Big Fish are tied at an eight. 
Good movie. Very well. Uh, yes, indeed. Do you have Do you have a pick ready for next week? I do. Do you want to announce it? Yep. It's Pirates of Silicon Valley. Pirates of Silicon Valley. Neither of you has seen it. I have not seen it. Recently. I know I did. I was like, hey, we should, I'm, I'm going to watch this. Well, I didn't watch it, but I, it's on my flex. So is this like a mockumentary or is it like a drama style playing like a out the real story? Okay. Essentially. Because I, I noticed they're credited as the real people that were involved. Um, that's a good cast. I just remember like being quote forced to watch this in school and actually like loving the storyline. I, I in don't school, know. you had to watch that. Yeah. Huh. Okay. For what class? Uh, I think it was a computer class. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did um, he, was he trying to get you guys hyped to become the newest big thing? Uh, no, I think it was a. I don't. I don't remember how it wasn't anything like the red though. Yeah, I'm interested. This it has a really good cast. Um, I don't recognize this director. What has he done? Literally nothing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, okay, so Pirates of Silicon Valley. That's next week. There you have it. Anybody else have anything they want to add before we uh, sign off? Not only. We became what we always were. A really big fish. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. thanks for listening. Uh, see you next time. Have a lovely day.